Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today in Pub Stomp MTG, and in today's video, I'll be discussing the new commander, Marina Vendril, from Duskborn House of Horror. And this commander is a pretty powerful commander. It focuses, of course, on Enchantress. And this commander is quite powerful because it focuses on the enchantment theme, so let's read what it does. For Wooburg Mana, when this does enter, reveal the top seven cards of your library, put all enchantment cards from among them into your hand, and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. She also does have a tap ability, lock or unlock a door of target room you control, activate only as a sorcery she is a 352 so this commander is pretty powerful you could utilize a couple different strategies of course the first one most notably is rooms you unlock and lock rooms and you're probably thinking to yourself why would I want to lock a room well there's some situations with specific rooms in the deck where you could actually lock it but then unlock it and you get some kind of ability reused I'll mention that a little bit later on with some examples also I did want to dive into a flicker theme because she has an ability of entering the battlefield revealing the top seven cards of your library and putting all enchantment cards into your hand that's pretty powerful so of course we could absolutely take advantage of that as well either way this is a pretty powerful commander in that enchantress theme and so without further ado let's get us started so let's first discuss some enchantress effects there's a lot of different effects we could take advantage of the first ones i did want to talk about are cost reducers to give a couple examples there's jukai naturalist herald of the pantheon and inquisitive glimmer these are all great because enchantment spells you cost cost one less but i would say the best out of the bunch would be inquisitive glimmer it has that great ability unlock cost you pay cost one less and I will say these are all great because we do have a lot of enchantments that we're gonna be casting in this deck cost reducing them here and there is gonna be absolutely huge there are also some options where we could get great card advantage for casting enchantments or when they enter the battlefield to name a couple options Sithis harvest hand is a great option along with Eidolana blossoms and enchantress's presence these are pretty much just redundancy effects we could absolutely take advantage of these so that we could get more enchantments in our hand that we could later cast on but the one to get the best card draw would be entity tracker for two and a blue it does have flash and does have that eerie ability whenever enchantment you control enters or whenever you fully unlock a room draw a card because of course this is a room deck we're going to be unlocking a bunch of different rooms so that we could absolutely take advantage of that ability to draw more cards to cast more rooms potentially so those are some things you want to keep in mind when making this deck getting a lot of options to cost reduce or ramp as well as getting some card draw but let's also dive into ramp a little bit more because of course we want to make sure we could cast all those spells and unlock all those rooms. Dryad of the Elysian Grove will get us an extra land drop and plus that it's enchantment too. The same can be said for Overlord of the Haunt Woods. This is a crazy ability. It has that impending cost. You could just cast it as an enchantment when it enters or attacks. Create a tapped colorless land token name everywhere. That is every basic land type. This is extremely good in this deck because of course we're in a five color deck. We want to make sure we have as much color fixing as we can. We could cast this for its impending cost or as a creature itself. It's still going to be an enchantment no matter what. I also think another good fit it would be Undo Spirit Dancer because it has that ability whenever an enchantment you control enters you may create a token that's a copy of it do it only once each turn so that does include all our rooms that we put on the battlefield all our enchantment creatures as long as they're not legendary this is going to be a great fit in the deck no question about it there's one more enchantment matters card that I did want to highlight is Demon of Fate's design I'm tired of talking about this because this card is too good in multiple decks in this set but it's absolutely worth mentioning because once during each of your turns you may cast an enchantment spell by paying life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost so at the expense of life we could cast our enchantment spells for free plus we could buff it up by paying two in a black and sacrificing another creature and get a big giant beater on the battlefield swinging at people but now i wanted to focus specifically on marina's abilities whether we're talking about flickering her or also untapping her so that we could tap it again to unlock or lock a room Thassa deep dwelling was the first one to come to mind at the beginning of your upkeep exile up to one other target creature you control then return that card to the battlefield under your control and hey would you look at that Thassa deep dwelling is also an enchantment creature too so when marina enters the battlefield and triggers we could get thassa deep dwelling into our hand and when we put thassa on the battlefield we have that extra value of flickering our commander so that re-enters the battlefield look at the top seven cards of our library and put any enchantments into our hand so this is a great consistent way of getting our commanders enter the battlefield trigger a card that we could absolutely take advantage of for offensive and defensive reasons would be ephemerate exile target creature control that return to the battlefield under its owner's control as an instant speed spell plus it does have re Rebound. This is just a great option just in case if somebody tries to remove our commander we could just play ephemerate, flicker it back onto the battlefield, and hey would you look at that we get that enters the battlefield trigger. And then at the beginning of our upkeep we could play this again to get that commander's ability again. But I would say one of my personal favorite options would be Displacer Kit and this is absolutely crazy in this deck specifically because we do have a lot of non-creature spells that we're casting with all those rooms. So with Displacer Kit when we do cast those non-creature spells we could flicker any target permanent on our battlefield. Most likely our commander 
commander so that one way we could just get more enchantment spells into our hand cast them then reflicker our commander over and over again this is just going to provide so much value for us another part of our commander's ability is to unlock or lock rooms with that tap ability so thousand year elixir is going to be critical you may activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste so we could use our commander's ability right away to unlock a room or lock a room plus we could pay one and tap untap target creatures so that way we can redundancy of our commander's ability to use it again even though this is more of an expensive option price wise manamo school at water's edge is going to be perfect in this deck because you can pay blue and tap an untap target legendary permanent you control and this is a legendary land so this is just a land you could slot into the deck and it'll just do wonders for you there are a lot of other options i do have a deck list down below in the description if you did want to go check it out for yourself to see what options there are in this video i usually typically talk about some cards that does synergize with our commander greatly there are a lot of other redundancy effects for example like enchantress style effects to draw cards i just didn't want to mention them all in this video specifically because i feel like that be again a little redundant but now i wanted to shift my focus on rooms of course you could throw in basically all the rooms if you really wanted to and our commander is going to do very well with them but i wanted to share with you some options that are the best of the best i talked about this one previously when discussing the mana value of rooms itself but mirror room and fractured realm is probably one of the best cards that you can be playing in this deck that's a room the first half reads for two and a blue when you unlock this door create a token that's a copy of target creature you control except it's a reflection in addition to its other types what's pretty neat about this ability is the fact that you can copy your own commander why would you want to do that when the legendary rule applies well your commander does have an etb most likely you're going to have a huge amount of enchantments in the deck so most likely you could easily refill your hand with a bunch of them with mirror room just copying your commander one of those will sacrifice but obviously you're making a token copy so that's not a big deal you could just sacrifice the token copy but the backside is pretty nuts fractured realm for five and two blue it's quite a bit of a mana cost if a triggered ability of a permanent you control triggers that ability triggers an additional time so this is just a roided out version of panharmonicon panharmonicon focuses just on etbs doubling them this just focuses on triggered abilities and doubling them in general sense so yes that does mean when you cast your commander and when it enters the battlefield you could just look at the top 14 cards of your library and put any enchantments into your hand that's pretty nutty another nutty card that works perfectly with our commander is dazzling theater and the other side prop room so dazzling theater is pretty good it's not necessarily going to help us in our situation unless we have a decent amount of creatures creature spells you cast have convoke but i like prop room even better for two and a white untap each creature you control during each other player's untap step so unfortunately with our commander we could only activate that room ability by tapping her at sorcery speed but i like this because it gives our creatures basically pseudo vigilance another fun room which is quite on point with flavor is unholy annex and ritual chamber the first side of it unholy annex does read at the beginning of your end step draw a card if you control a demon each opponent loses two life and you gain two life otherwise you lose two life so even if you don't have a demon on the battlefield this is pretty good for card advantage you're at 40 life total i mean most likely you're going to be at less at this point uh during the game because it's cost two and a black but i will say the other side ritual chamber is something i'm more excited about when you unlock this door create a six six black demon creature token with flying because marina is such a toolbox with all these different rooms you could lock or unlock a door you could unlock ritual chamber and then lock it again and then reuse that ability a couple times with a marina's tap ability and of course the more untappers we do have in our deck the more this could be absolutely abused the more demons we could put on the battlefield it's just something to consider to get more value out of your rooms because when you unlock those cards you get some type of value then you can lock them again then repeat the process a couple times also walking closet is going to be pretty nutty in this deck too it's basically a crucible worlds on one side you may play lands from your graveyard and on the other side it's basically a yagmoth's will forgotten seller but what's nice about forgotten seller is the fact that you don't have to worry about paying its mana cost you can just tap your commander basically get that Yogmoth's will effect for free then with marina's ability the next turn you could just lock it again and if you have it on tapper you could just unlock it again so many ways where we could absolutely abuse this another one i'm absolutely putting in a couple of decks is funeral room and awakening hall you basically get like a blood artist effect on that funeral room whenever a creature you control dies each opponent loses one life and you gain one life i don't know how much this tie is really going to come up because we do have a lot of big creatures we're not really necessarily in a sacrifice deck but awakening hall oh my goodness whenever you unlock this door return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield so if you have like one or two cards in your graveyard that are creatures it's still going to be okay because what you could do is just tap your commander unlock awakening hall for zero mana instead of like eight mana then lock that room again and then reuse it a different time when your graveyard is full of creatures again honestly the more time i'm talking about marina's ability the more i realize how powerful it is with all these room effects obviously it's made to be a room commander and fortunately and unfortunately for our opponents one of the rooms can be a win con for us look no further than 
central elevator and promising stairs. The first room central elevator does read for three and a blue. When you unlock this door, search your library for a room card that doesn't have the same name as a room you control. Reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle. So this is basically a tutor that we can repeatedly use with our commander's tap ability. But then we go to the win con with promising stairs for two and a blue. At the beginning of your upkeep, surveil one. You win the game if there are eight or more different names among unlocked doors of rooms you control. So if someone pulls off the promising stairs, let me know down below in the comments how you did it. I'd love to hear it because I don't know how often this is going to win you the game, but if it does, I would love to hear it. Besides that point, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on Marina Vendril. This is one incredible commander. I wasn't super high on it because I don't gravitate towards five color commanders, but this is interesting and unique enough that it focuses on Dora specifically, mixed in with the ETB theme, making sure that you refill your hand with a bunch of enchantments. So I thought it was a little bit more original than your typical five color good stuff commander, but I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Do you plan on building this yourself? What other cards would you suggest in the deck? Also, if you can, make sure to check out my Patreon down below in the description. That helps a long way in growing the channel. And if you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't subscribe, that definitely will help too. So with that said, thank you for stomping by.